This is Twit. Bethesda's game studio. Now, I was a little... How did you feel, Ashley, about the Microsoft Activision uh, acquisition? Was that okay? Did that do okay for you? Well, full disclosure, I have worked with Microsoft Xbox. So, I, like, right. I don't know if I'm the best person to comment. But I, but I also... Um, it's like, I understand why like they wanted to purchase Activision Blizzard King. And I think a lot of people forget about the King part of it. King, it was um, which mobile, is a, which right? Which is a very mobile. important yeah. part of the purchase. Um, but uh, but yeah, I it's, I mean, acquisitions are always hard, right? Because there's always people who get made redundant. I mean, my husband was part of the Activision Blizzard layoffs earlier this year. So, oh, so I'm like, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine. Aye. He's got a great job now. It's like he's 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 doing fine. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's like it's um it's one of those things where and my brother like still works at Blizzard, so I'm like very kind of close to that situation. But I just think it's like it's always hard, and I, like I think just in general in the industry, just as I think we can all agree that we've seen this like massive sort of um, effort by the bigger companies in the industry. So the the Sonys, the Microsofts uh, to, to snap up a lot of independent studios. And, you know, it, it does make the industry smaller, right? Which is like, it's that, which is never a good thing. You always want a big, robust that was my um, industry full of, yes. yeah, it's like, Diversity you always want a big, Diversity is a good thing, right? It's always a good thing. And so, and, and also like independent studios are important because we see games from them, um, that we might not see from a bigger publisher that owns a studio. And so, um, I mean, there's there have been so many hit games and also really artistic games that are that push the boundaries of creativity that have been from indies or single developers even. I mean, Animal Well is a really good example. This came out earlier this year. Just a really incredible game. And Billy, the guy who who made it, just worked on it for a really long time. And um, and it's it's just an amazing game. It's made by one guy. So it's just, you know, this is, you know, it's, it's hard and I understand why it happened because money was very cheap for a long time and like, and it was very easy to like ha make these acquisitions and there's just a lot of factors that go into it, but it also, you know, again, it, it, I see the effects of it in both gaming and, and the, the streaming industry is also suffering from this where there was a lot of acquisitions and we're seeing like people are having a harder time finding jobs because it's more competitive. There are less roles available. And it's like, it's just, it's hard for, for a lot of people I'm in these like creative mediums. I'm sorry to hear that your husband uh, lost a job. That was one of the concerns, of course, is layoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft, a few years earlier, acquired Bethesda, creators mm -hmm. of Fallout and many, many great titles. Uh, Bethesda's game studio workers have just unionized, which I thought was... Very interesting. Under they're under the Communication Workers of America, which is uh, this is a big this is a big story. Yeah, I mean, I think it would have been a bigger story this week had there not been so many news stories this week. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is the last one so in the news. bucket. It's we got down I think to the it bottom broke on Friday too. Yeah, in the yeah, of the yeah. Stuff. So uh, yeah, two hundred forty-one like right the uh, developers, stuff. artists, engineers, programmers, and, and designers. Uh, signed a union authorization card. Microsoft recognized the union to their credit. Uh, it's also uh, Elder Scrolls. It's also Starfield, uh, which maybe was a little bit of a disappointment. But Bethesda good, does good stuff. And actually, I'm yeah, thrilled to games. see them. I'm thrilled to see them organize. Uh, maybe I think this is very. This is a long time, very needed thing in the gaming industry. Like I, I think this has just been like a long time coming. I, yeah. Like, I think the unionization of game development is something that um, I think got staved or, or like delayed for a long time because of how much money was in the industry and how much. But now that we're seeing sort of a consolidation of a lot of different, like, you know, a lot of different things and a lot of your, different elements your husband, in the industry. It's, your, was your, he was not in a union when he was laid off. I no, no. Yeah. He's, he was, he worked at, um, he worked for Activision Blizzard for esports. And so when, like when that merger or like when the acquisition closed, like it was really funny because <laughs> they split Activision and Blizzard now are like their own separate entities under Microsoft. But before 
when they were just ABK as a company, it was like there was a business unit that was like Activision Blizzard. Sports. And so it just oh. couldn't exist anymore. I like see. it was like right. a weird thing where like it didn't. parts of Activision are unionized. The QA uh, division mm -hmm. is unionized. Uh, yep. Blizzard uh, in Albany and Raven Zenimax. Software. And like Zenimax. Zenimax has yeah. some. Yeah, that's there's right. there's I think, again, like this is kind of a it's a long time coming and it's still going to take time. Um, but it's definitely, I think there's just going to be more people who feel like they have less to lose by unionizing. Um, and I, like that is true in, uh, I'm going to say like the media, like even in like tech media, we've seen a lot of uh, tech websites That's unionize. Right. We've seen, yep. we've seen a lot of, a lot of that. I mean, it's just, and Hollywood, like the traditional studio system is already unionized and like, you know, to their benefit, like they're able to, you know, go on strike and ask for, you know, better working conditions and so, and protections. And so, um, you know, I, I think this is kind of a long time coming just in the industry. And it's not just exclusive to Microsoft. I think it's just an industry wide thing that is like, maybe we start seeing a tipping point here. We'll see. Yeah. You could even argue that unionization leads to innovation because people feel safer at work. Right. Yeah. People running the tech companies would not, will not make that argument. No, but, uh, no, I agree. no, no, no. Well, there's, a, so there's, a, there's such an interesting, there was an interesting article that came out about um, a lot of Japanese game developers and how uh, Japanese game studios, like their, their turnover rate is like very low. So, um, and one of the reasons why is because Japan has a lot of regulations in place that are worker protections for mm -hmm. against layoffs. Like there's, there so are a lot really of- don't feel a need for a union maybe. Well, it's, well, I mean, yeah, it's like, I think that there's not really, it's not even a need. It's just like, they feel protected, protected enough. Yeah. Yeah. They are protected very well. Yeah. Um, And so there's, you know, and also like, I mean, you look at companies like Nintendo, Mario Wonder came out last year, Super Mario Wonder. And, you know, the same five guys, like one of them might be uncredited on the game, um, but could have potentially worked on it anyway. Um, But the, the five men who worked on the original Mario game, like worked on Mario wonder. So it's like, th these are, these people work decades working on the same franchise, it's like amazing. not even just within the Isn't same company. Amazing. And this is legend and of Zelda. You get a like, benefit from that. It's very clear. You, you get do. a benefit. You from that, very right? clearly get a benefit from that. That's you very, very clearly do. Thing, though, because in Japan, yes. like those, yes. com those, those, Benito, our producer, those ahead, industries Benito. in Japan, and the a lot of the corporations, they aren't trying infinite growth. Like that's not their thing. No. Right. Sustainability no. is a no. big thing in Japan. Sustainability is the, is the factor there. And also Nintendo has come to the brink, like in the eighties, the early eighties, they were on the verge of bankruptcy. They were on the verge of folding up shop. So, mm -hmm. it, like, so this is like a very, um, and look up like what the CEO very makes. Thing. Look up what the CEO makes at Nintendo. Right. You'll yeah. be shocked. Yeah. The, it's like, it's not, it's not billions, it, huh? It, no, it's, it's like, yeah, the, or something. wow. It's, it's, and like, and very famously, between, well, very yeah. famously, when the Wii U was not a success, then mm -hmm. president of the company, Satoru Iwata, was like, I, I am taking a pay cut. Like, I will not get paid because we want to retain our workforce. Like, these people yeah. matter to us. Like, we need to keep them here. And so that was like a very, wow. that's a very like famous example of, you know, uh, how, how those studios They only kind of pay Miyamoto $2 million so, a year. See? Such see? a bargain. Oh, my God. So envious. Find out oh how much uh, the, the president EA. makes two and a half million a year. What does the president of EA make? Oh, God. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> well, like Zaslav is a good example, and he's not in games, but it's just like, you know, it's Take like a look at the way the value of the company dropped over the first year he was in charge, right. though. I would yeah. love to know what that's going to do to his pay package, if anything. The uh, president of, uh, actually, uh, the CEO of uh, EA makes $25 million a year. 25.6 million last year. <laughs> That's time, ten, nine, nine to 10 times more. <laughs> the uh, yeah. president yeah. makes 12 million. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you know, and Miyamoto is arguably. The disparity between like minimum wage and it's like, yeah. It's, yeah. it's astonishing what um, what the gap is in this country between yeah. the lowest. It's very large. Could, right? Very but, large. So I don't know as much about how this plays out in gaming, although I understand that obviously, yeah, there's a lot of really rough working conditions with like crunch time and things like that. But right. like, I think my understanding is that in certainly in Silicon Valley, there was like a very mm -hmm. aggressive effort in like the 70s and 80s to be like, don't unionize 
-hmm. we will like, you know, basically do a lot of like propaganda we'll take care and concessions. Of you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that I think was now the Reagan the era. And uh, no, that's in yeah. the 90s, Leo. I was to say I, the 90s and I the early aughts as well. Oh, OK. I did a I did a reported piece in the 90s on whether or not um, web, whether or not web programmers and web developers would ever unionize. And several of the people I talked to who were developers working crazy long hours were were, were saying, no, we'll never unionize because it's a meritocracy and the talent always rises to the top and gets compensated fairly. Like that was the myth that they were being sold from management on down, even as far as the 90s. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.